thought that you were... Drunk? Yeah. Really drunk? Yeah. Well, I'm not. But that's good, isn't it? I think you should leave. Oh. Now you want me to leave? No. I just... I'm really high. Like, I'm really high right now. I don't know what I'm doing. I think you should go. But a second ago, you were determined for me to stay. You were pretty insistent, actually. Well, I'm a nice guy. Are you? I thought we had a connection, I guess. A connection? Okay. What do I do for a living? Sorry, maybe that one's too hard. How old am I? How long have I lived in the city? What are my hobbies? What's my name? Well, that's that's a clip from Promising Young Woman. I'm delighted to say we've been joined by Kerry Mulligan, who is the aforementioned Promising Young Woman, and uh, also the uh, writer and director of the movie, Emerald Fennell. Hello, Emerald, and hello, Kerry. Hello. Uh, Emerald, where are you? I'm in London. You look as though you could be on the set of Promising Young Woman. There's n pleasant pinks and greens there and a yellow light shade. It's a lifelong dedication to pastels. <laughs> uh, uh, Kerry, where are you? I'm at home, yeah, in the country. Okay, an excellent array of books just behind you. Anyway, thank you very much indeed uh, for joining us. Uh, what an extraordinary film. So uh, we watch this as a family and... In the, in, in the list of family movies that are considered iconic family movies, there's Harry Potter's Three and Six, <laughs> there's School of Rock, and now I think Promising Young Woman wow. uh, has, entered the, uh, has entered the shortlist. Emerald, maybe we should start with you. Where, what are the origins of Cassie? As this is, as you wrote the movie, where did Cassie come from? Well, I think she probably came from, you know, just, just growing up in a, in a world where I think getting girls drunk as a way of, you know, seducing them was just completely commonplace. It was in all the movies that we grew up with, um, used as a joke, the walk of shame, you know, waiting for the drunk girl to sort of announce herself at a party, losing your virginity by any means necessary. This was just like the, the comedy fodder of movies that I, you know, in the world that I grew up in. And, and it, obviously that bled into all of our lives too. So I guess I've been thinking a lot about that and about revenge movies in general and what, what it might look like to center a, a real woman in a, in a real sort of revenge movie. And for me, usually just a scene comes to mind as the first thing. And it was a drunk girl lying on a bed as someone undresses her saying drunkenly, what are you doing? What are you doing? And then suddenly sitting up stone cold sober and saying, what are you doing? And I think then I knew who Cassie was really and, and, and I had an idea of what the film might be. Kerry, what did what did you make of this script when you read about Cassie and the kind of movie this was going to be? What was your reaction? I mean, I was just blown away by the writing. I just hadn't read anything like it. And I feel pretty, it's usually pretty instinctive when I read something I know fairly immediately, um, whether I sort of feel strongly about it or not. And with this, I just immediately thought if anyone else plays this part, I'm going to be <laughs> So I called, called my agent immediately and was like, please let me meet Emerald as soon as she can. And we met up two days later. I think, had, had you worked before? I think you had met and worked once before, Kerry. <laughs> well, we didn't, we didn't remember this until about halfway through our shoot. But yeah, Emerald one day, for some reason, was on IMDb halfway through our shoot. And it reminded her that we had worked together on a production of Trial and Retribution when we were both about 19 years old. Uh, but neither of us could remember it. Right. Uh, and, and have you gone back and checked it out since? Yeah, we watched it on YouTube when we were on set. And Michael Fassbender was in it, which we thought was very exciting. <laughs> wow. OK. So, uh, but, but to the present then, did you specifically want Carrie Emerald? And if so, what was it? Because I think people would, be, people would be surprised and shocked. I mean, we've loved Carrie's films for years, but I haven't seen Carrie do this kind of thing before. Why did you want her? Um, I mean, mostly first and foremost, because I think she's a genius. And I think we, we it's funny with Carrie because she's so good. I think we often forget the variety of the films she's been in, the kind of characters she's played, Shame, Great Gatsby, Drive, An Education, 
wildlife like it's it's a very kind of broad church and I've always been so impressed by all of her work and I think the thing about Promising Young Women is it really is more than anything it's a sort of dark comedy and and maybe a satire but it was really important that in this kind of slightly heightened world that we built that Cassie herself who's the center of it was completely real felt completely real and was somebody who was both funny and clever and um, mean and all of the things that she is but yes but, but who kind of wasn't a sort of in inverted commas badass kick-ass woman who was just going to take things into her own hands you know she needed to feel like she needed to feel like what she is which is a kind of grieving person and an, an addict up to a point Kerry, just introduce us then to to the Cassie that we meet at the at, at the start of the film, and you're working in the coffee shop. I look, there's there's a great scene where someone comes in and asks for coffee, and you just say no, and they go away. Uh, how how would you describe? Is she adrift? Is she? What are the words you would use? I think she's just learned how to function from from the you know um, from an outsider's perspective. I think she's you know her life kind of got put on pause at a young age when this event this tragic event happened and I think she's ever since then just been somewhat stuck and I think she's become very adept at hiding in plain sight and making people feel like she's okay and I think that's kind of reflected in the way she looks and the way she you know has a multicolored manicure and she has a job and you know from the outside she's sort of functioning at a fairly decent level but I think yeah you know the, the more time you spend with her in the film the more you see how much she's kind of suppressing and, and keeping uh, a lid on. Can you, Emerald, just describe the look of the film? Because you've talked about the kind of woman that Cassie is, you talked about revenge movies and so on, but it looks like something else altogether. Yeah, I think it's funny. funny thing. When you're discussing serious subject matter and you find it particularly with films, they look a certain way. There's a certain kind of grey grimness, a sort of reality, a dedication to reality um, that is... You know, that's very effective, but I, I think I, from the get-go, I wanted the film itself to be a reflection of who Cassie was, which was, as Carrie said, she's hiding in plain sight. And up to a point, this is a movie that is seems to be one thing and is something else. And so it's full of all the things that I think a lot of women, particularly my age, but lots of people in, in the world, would maybe dismiss as not serious. So it's kind of candy floss and um Paris. why would they do that can i why, why would they why would they dismiss it i think it's a very subconscious thing but we tend to equate gravitas with i mean you know on the most surface level mahogany and velvet drapes which we see a little bit of in this movie and frivolousness and silliness with things that i would say young women like so you know, Britney Spears is probably not treated in the same way that, that Wagner is, I suppose, that taking two examples from this screenplay. So it's also, it's just about kind of saying these things, everything, nothing is really ever quite as it seems. Lots of our lives look beautiful. We, we dedicate a lot of time to making them look and seem beautiful because that's how we, you know, that's how we can function. But also if it's Cassie's film, which it is, I myself have been prone to a slightly silly manicure. And it's very interesting seeing how people respond to you when you've got multicolored nails, especially at work, especially in a meeting. There's a kind of very quick assumption made. And what's useful about that in this movie is that, you know, this is a young woman with a multicolored manicure. So nobody thinks she might use those nails to scratch their eyes out. So it's a very useful kind of thriller tactic, I suppose. Yeah. And I get, okay, so thriller, uh, revenge, there's a, this feels like a genre busting film, a bit carry. It certainly, it certainly felt a, an audacious movie to watch. Is that what it felt like to make? No, not really. I mean, it didn't, uh, you know, I suppose I was really focused on just trying to tell the story. Honestly, it didn't feel, I felt so confident in Emerald's vision and how she wanted to present the film and who else she was casting in it and the writing that I just sort of felt like my job was to try and, you know, tell the story of Cassie as, as honestly as I could. So I didn't feel like anything was sort of, you know, and, and also these are so, so many things in this film are things that we've just seen before. We've seen 
all of these scenes play out. We've just always seen it through the eyes of the man who's, you know, sort of taking advantage of that moment. So I think that, you know, there really isn't anything sort of overtly controversial or audacious. It's just, it's just looking at it through a different lens. And, and so I just felt very, you know, Emerald created such a great set. I felt so comfortable just sort of playing around. And it was actually, you know, being surrounded by comedians obviously was really good fun for the most part, you know, serious days, but, but so much fun. Who who's the funniest then? Who if you're surrounded by comedians, who's making you laugh the most? It's, it's really hard to choose because they were all brilliant. Bo obviously was brilliant and hilarious. There's some uh, footage of Jennifer Coolidge improvising at that dinner table scene that couldn't make it into the film, probably because I ruined it all by shaking, laughing through all of it. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it was just it's so hard. So everyone was just on their on their A game. I'm going to stick with the audacious idea, Emerald, um, even if Carey's dismissed it. I'm still saying that a lot of people will find it shocking and audacious in a good way. It's it's so interesting. So I, I kind of look, I agree with Carey. It's funny because when you talk, once you've made something and you do this thing, when you're talking to everyone about it, I think you, you sort of have to think about how how you how you made it and, and what you were trying to do or say, I think. Honestly, the truth of it, for me anyway, was that I just wanted to make a film that I, I wanted to watch, that I, that, that, I, that I would have wanted to watch at any age, that I think that I hope that lots of other people would enjoy for all the reasons that I enjoy it, not just because of, you know, it politically, but because it's a, you know, romantic and it's a thriller and I hope people find it sort of novel or beautiful, whatever it is. It's really, I, I think it would be really difficult to set out deliberately to write something audacious. It just sort of is what it is in a funny yeah. way. I know that seems like I'm a cop out, but it's true. Well, let me let, let, let me let me try this then. Carrie first, same question to both of you. Um, my daughter's reaction to this movie was that all girls should be made to watch this film. And then she said, scratch that, as you all boys should be made to watch this film. <laughs> Carrie first, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think she's she's bang on. And I wish that there had been more films like this when I was younger. I think it's it's had a really interesting reaction. But I think, you know, we are just informed so much by the things that we watch. I mean, I learned an American accent from watching Friends. You know, I that's we grew up with these movies and we grew up with these scenarios and normalized this kind of behavior that we see in the film to the point where it's, you know, I had to do some unpicking in my own mind of things that I had previously kind of laughed at. And I think it's, so I think, yeah, it's in, in that sense. But also what's so great about the film is that, you know, there are films that you feel like you should watch and you sort of build yourself up to it and think, right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna set aside that evening and I'm gonna watch that super depressing film that I know I should watch. Um, <laughs> You know, but there's nothing about this film, you know, of course, I think you know, everyone should watch it. And I think it asks great questions, but also it's not something that feels didactic. We don't have the answers, but it's also it's not a film that you feel obliged to. It's something I think that, you know, just from the trailer, you just want to because Emerald's created such a, you know, it's a real movie in that sense. It's, you know, it's such a shame you can't, you know, for the most part, go to the cinema and see it because it feels like it's yes. old fashioned about it yeah. in that sense. It's a movie, you know. Same question to you, Emerald. Um, how old's your daughter? Oh, she's mid twenties, so she's so, okay. so so this is all perfectly fine, you know. That's why it was a family uh, viewing. But no, no, you know, no, I, I didn't mean that. I didn't mean she, she's eight. Um, no, I, <laughs> <laughs> no, sixteen I, months. I was interested. Just, I just, just interested because she's probably yeah, she's not a million miles away from how you know me and Carrie. Although I'm definitely more of a crone. Um, <laughs> yes, I hope. I really, honestly, do think that. This is about, it's just a film about like all of us, I think, and the ways in which we can be complicit unthinkingly, the ways we can do harm to other people without really noticing. That's, I, I think, really in a wider sense what this film is about. It's about redemption and forgiveness and how we get those. And honestly, this so happens to be about, you know, consent and, and these things, but it could extend to so much of all of our lives. I think we're all looking to forgive ourselves and for forgiveness for, for all sorts of things that we've done. And the reason that Carrie is so frightening in lots of ways is that she doesn't come and punch you in the face. She comes and shows you that you're your worst fear, that you're not good. And I think, I hope that that's something that will resonate with lots of people. 
I think you're probably right, actually, with that. And we're out of time. Emerald Fennell and Kerry Mulligan, thank you very much indeed for your time and all the best with the movie. Thank you very much.